Okay, good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we are learning Maseches Baba Basra Daf Samach Beis. And um, we're going to be stopping at the two dots about 10 lines from the bottom of Samach Beis and Beis. And as you can see, Samach Kimmel is not so long. Uh, so we're kind of getting back to some smaller dapim. Uh, tonight, what we're going to be discussing, as we started last night with our Mishnah, is what about sales that are not seemingly all-inclusive? In our Mishnah that we started with yesterday at the open of the parak, we said that if a person sells a house, it precludes the etzia, it precludes the cheder. Now here, we're, what we're going to be talking about is difficult cases of sale. Let's get started on the top line, last word on the line, on Samach Beis Meralev. Meitzar lo, meitzar echad aruch, u meitzar echad katsar. I'd like you to just take a look at the picture that's in the Rashbam. Three out of the four boundaries are full. One out of the four boundaries is half. So if I say to you, I'm selling you a property on the western, southern, and eastern walls, it's 100% of the wall. On the northern wall, it's only 50%. Now, obviously, that's very confusing because if you look at whatever is opposite the bottom wall, seemingly you'd get the whole property. But if you look what's opposite the northern wall, you'd only get half. So Rav says, take a look at this, Amar Rav, Lo kona ele ha You only get to be kona half of the field, which is whatever is opposite the short wall. So he gave you the boundaries of east, west, west, north, and south. On the north, it was only half of a wall. Rav Paskins that you only get half of the wall whatever is opposite the Kotsar, in this picture, it's the right half of the field. However, people pushed back against him. Amrulei Rav Kahana Veravasi Lerav. They said, wait one second. The Yikne Keneged Rosh Tor. He should be able to angle from the midline of the northern border and angle it downward. Look at, look at the second picture in the Rashbam, where you can see that from the midline, he angled away to the opposite corner. And he'd lose the right triangle, but keep nearly the whole property. It's a little bit more than three-fourths of the property. So why don't we say that? And Shasik Rav. Rav didn't know what to say in such a case. Seemingly, that means that Rav accepted their pushback, that when one were to frame out, I'm selling you this property, east, west, north, and south. All the borders are full except the north one, which is only half. Then... Rav seems to now agree that we would take a line and we would draw it from the midline of the northern border down to the bottom left angle, bottom left corner, and Shalom al Yisrael, that will be the purchase. Rav seems to agree. However, Umode Rav, Rav would definitely have admitted out of the gates without needing any coercion. Hecha di Ika, Meitzar Ruvein Vishimon, Michad Gisa, Umeitzar Levi Vihuda, Michad Gisa, that had it been that there were numerous owners. Take a look at the third picture in the Rashbam. Ruvain and Shimon own the top. Levi and Yehuda own the top, and if the bottom. And if I said, hey, I'm selling you a property where the top is owned by Ruvain and Shimon and the bottom is owned by Yehuda, and I don't mention Levi, so then the Gemara says that in that case, Pashut, that the, the line should be drawn as it is in that third picture, why? In such a case where there are four owners, you need to be extremely explicit. And you need to see, say that Ruvain is opposite Levi, Shimon is opposite Yehud, and I want you to have everything. But if you don't articulate that when you're making the deal, it must be like the third picture down in the Rashbam that we only sell to him everything other than the Levi triangle. That's what the Gemara says. Why Why don't we make it a quadrant? I, I, I don't know. Why don't we just view it as four quadrants? I'm sure there's a difference in, I didn't, I'm not a math guy, well, but... There's probably more sales for Levi and Yehuda. This is a case where there's no Yehuda, right? Manafshach, why wouldn't we do it? Why not just cut the right quadrant and say, you get three quarters? In both cases, either in the case we started with, which is the first picture of the Rashbam, where Rav Paskind, you only get half, why would Rob Paskin only get out? Why don't you get three quarters? I could understand a svar by that, but uh, over here by the Ruvain Shimon Levi Yehuda, why isn't that we? Why isn't it that we said that Levi's property is a square in the bottom right corner of that third picture? So I don't know the answer to that. 
I think the area actually might be identical because if you, I, I think so, because it, what you're doing is making two triangles out of the right half. So I think it's actually the same area. I'm still curious why we didn't just put it into squares, but the Gemara assumes everybody, the Gemara doesn't even debate it. The Gemara accepts this at face value that what you don't get in the Ruven, Shimon, Yehuda, and Levi example is Levi's triangle. Again, I don't know if there's an Afkamina. I just, in my head, I would have thought that it would have just been uh, squares. And in their head, they're like, why would you do that? Let it be angles. Maybe that's how we assume that it was divvied up. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. We are two-thirds of the way down on Samech Bez Maralaf. Meitzar Ruvain Mizrach Umarav Umeitzar Shimen Tzafon Vidarom so let's get our case straight. That's the next picture in the Rashbam. And now let's look at the fourth picture down in the Rashbam. And let's look back at the Gemara. Meitzar Ruvain Mizrach Umarav. As you can see, on the, uh, well, I guess uh, Mizrach and Marav is top and bottom here. East and west belongs to Ruvain. Mizrach Umeitzar Shimon Safon Vidarom. So their ownership is really like the grilled cheese sandwich cut in half, right? That they, they both own sections of, of both. The ownership is complicated. So it really should be broken up in quarters. That's really what it should look like. So in such a case where if you're making a sale like that, when you're selling it, you need to say, train on both sides. And Shimon train. If you want to sell the whole property, that's how you have to talk. Both Ruvains and both Shimons, then you own the property. Otherwise, we're not going to give you all the property. We'll give you only a portion of that sale. The Gemara wants to know, how do we apply these rules to other cases? Are they owning Shimon and Ruvain the property together? Or they each own they... portions of the property. They're not, they're not no, necessary. There's, there's no boundary between the two. No, not, not that we see. No, that's correct. But they don't own it in partnership. They're separate owners. mahu. What if, and without the Rashbam, we wouldn't know what's going on. Uh, what if they were only talking about the corners such that in the fifth picture on the right side, it means you'll get a strip of land from one corner to the other. We don't know the answer to that. Kimin gam mahu. Kimin gam, one of the letters of the, uh, uh, of the uh, what is it, the Greek alphabet. And this is an L shape. So that's the picture to the left of the fifth picture that we were looking at. If you're only looking at the corners like those L-shaped strips of property, kimin gam mahu, what would they get? We don't know. Turning to the top of Samach Bez Mid Bez, Viserugin Mahu, again, without the pictures, we wouldn't know. Viserugin means if you look at the picture on the left where there are eight owners of triangles of land, Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Hudi, Sachar, Zvun, Yosef, and Benyamin. And I say on the north, Ruvain, on the east, Levi, on the south, east, I only say one on each side, Viserugin Mahu. In all of these cases, we would say Teku. We don't know. So just to review, those cases are all unknowns when we only refer to corners, when we have the like the kimin gam, like that the Greek letter, and serigin, we don't know the answer to that. What we're gonna start now and finish at the two dots is a, a question um, that where there's a, a shtickle ambiguity, and then we're gonna see two different approaches within Rava. Mates are a take on the Gemara. Does anybody any uh Rishan or Achman try to figure out a take? By Kashias, we solve them. By Tekus, we don't. Mm -hmm. As far as I understood. I haven't looked at all the Rishonim by every Teku. I haven't even looked at most. But my, my assumption is that Kashia is an answerable question and Teku is an unanswerable question. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. Okay. It's something like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the blind leading the blind, David. So, oh, yeah. As far as you know. Top of Samach Beis and Beis, one more case for the night, but it'll take us toward the bottom of the page. Meitzar lo meitzar rishon. I gave you one border. U meitzar sheni, and I gave you the second border. U meitzar shlishi, and I gave you the third border. But u meitzar revi lo matzar lo. So I only gave you three borders. So what happens with the fourth border? Omar Rav. Rav says, Kone hakol chutz mi meitzar revi. You get everything except for that fourth border. U Shmuel Omar, I disagree. You even get the fourth border. You only get one piece of all four of the borders, just one trim around the edges of all borders. 
And he holds this last sheet of Ravasi, Savala Kirab, the Amar Shiure Shayer, that there must have been something left over. It must be that what was left over was borders. And according to Ravasi, if I sell you something with an east, west, and north border, but not the south, so then I only get the trim of the four borders. <laughs> A very unique shita. Now, there's two versions of Rava here, one more difficult than the next. This would probably in non-Dafyomi terms take us a good half hour to go through each of these. Once we understood the first one, the second one would be easier. I'll do my best to be as clear as possible. The pictures on the side will help. Omar Rava. Hilchasa, how do we paskin in this? Because we saw a machlokes in this case between Rav and Shmuel and Ravasi. Hilchasa, kona hakol chutz mi meitzar rivi. This is an, an express copy of the Shita of Rav. Vilo Amran, when do we say that you are Kone Hakol except for the fourth border? El Delo Mivla. That's only true when that fourth border is not consumed within the other three borders. Look at the pictures on the bottom of the uh, Rashbam or two thirds of the way down in the Rashbam. When something is Lo Mivla, that means that the border that we're discussing is not included within the other three walls of the borders. Masha'en kein, something that's muvla, the fourth wall, the fourth direction that we're discussing is included within the boundaries of the other walls. So let's go back in the Gemara. This shita of Rav is only true, Ela de lo muvla. Rav says, you don't, uh, you don't get to keep the fourth border when that fourth border is not already swallowed by the other parts of the boundaries that I've shared. Aval Mivla, but even according to Rav, who said that you otherwise don't get the fourth border, he agrees that if that fourth border is included, that's the picture on the right, as you can see, the fourth border is inside the height of those outside walls. Aval Mivla Konam. V'chilo Mivla Nami. And even according to Rab, where he says, Lo Mivlanami, that when it when the fourth border is not included in the wall, that you're not Kone, Lo Amran, Ela Deika Ale, Richva de Dikla, that's only true when there's a row of trees, the Habitishis Kabin, when it's large enough to plant nine Kabin of seed. Aval, Leka Ale, Richva de Dikla, Velo Habitishis Kabin. If the, that ground, that fourth boundary is not planted or plantable, so then, even though it's not Muvla, Rav would still say Kana. Rav would still say you own it, even though that fourth border is La Muvla. But because it's not planted at all, so therefore it is for the taking. And even in our case that we started with at the top of the page where Rav was Makbed on the fourth border, here, even if it's Lo Muvla, but if it's also not planted and not, not uh, something that's plantable, so then it goes to the owner, even though the fourth border wasn't mentioned in the initial case. Michlal, what's inferred from here? Dichi muvla, that when it is swallowed, moving back to the right picture, that when the fourth boundary is included within the other walls of the property, afal gav de ika ale richva de dikla vahabitishes kabin, kone. That also implies that Rav would hold that if in the picture on the right, where the where the border is muvla within the other walls, that if there is planting of a dikla of the trees or of a tisha kabin, that it would be kone as well. All of this is version one of Rabbah. Very technical. We hold like Rav unless it's muvla. We hold like Rav unless it's lo muvla but not planted. However, Ika de Amri, a third of the way down, another version of Rabbah. We learned version one of Rabbah. Here's another version of Rabbah. Hilchasa, we start out the same way. Kana hakol, but we change gears right here. Ve'afilu meitzah revi. Whose shita is that? Shmuel. Version number one of Rava held like Rav. Version number two of Rava holds like Shmuel. Now let's continue our analysis. Velo Amran, when did Shmuel say that you get everything, even the fourth wall? When it's obvious, when it's obvious what's going on the picture on the right, Shmuel says, guys, just be, just look at the context. He said east, west, north. When it came to the south, he said nothing. 
But Lamaisa, that south border is swallowed within the other borders, just like the picture of Muvla. So Shmuel says, of course you're Kone. Aval, Shmuel is a pragmatist. Aval, lo Mivla. But in the picture on the left, where Shmuel is looking at that border and he says, not inside the other borders, lo Kone. Super practical approach. Simple. In fact, it seems like Rav and Shmuel don't argue. It seems like they're saying the same thing. We'll get to the Nafkamina between them shortly. And Vichy Mivla Nami. Even according to Shmuel, when he says that it's Muvla and that border that we forgot to speak about, that it is Kone, Lo Amran, that's only true that you're Kone when that land is not planted. When it's not planted or plantable. Aval, in the case of Muvla, according to Shmuel, if it's Ik Ale Richva de Dikva Labatishes Kaben Lo Kone, if it is in fact planted, so perhaps that's why it was left out in that I don't want to sell it to you. And therefore, it's not sold to you. So if it's muvla but planted, it remains mine. My ambiguity, when I forgot to mention that border, obviously it's because I planted that or because it's plantable and therefore you don't get it in the sale. Michlal, what's implied from here, halfway down on Samach Beis and Beis, lo muvla, that according to Shmuel, where if the boundary we're talking about is not included in the other boundaried walls, it seems to be, to stay consistent with Shmuel, that you would not be Kona that property if there was nothing on it. It seems that the planting of that tree, of that space, has a lot to do with the halacha. And says the Gemara, Shaminan mitar lishne de Rava, we learn a couple of things from the language of Rava. Debisade lo shir velomidi. We're very thorough when we sell fields. And Vishamina nami, we also learned. Dehecha de mivla, veleka ale richva de dikla, veleka ale richva de dikla. If something is swallowed by the boundaries, that's the picture on the right, but there's nothing planted in that, in that questionable territory. And below Havatisha's cabin kana, and and below Havatisha's cabin, and it's not plantable that kana that one would be kone, and we also would know from Rava that lo mivla if it was the prop picture on the left, the property in discussion wasn't surrounded by the existing borders. Lo mivla, but ve'ikale richva de dikla ve'havatisha cabin lo cabin lo kana. He would agree as well within the camp of Rava. Both versions of Rava would agree to this. However, and this is where we see a difference between version number one of Rava and version number two of Rava, and we're going to stop here at these two dots. Mivla, if it was the picture on the right, and the Ika Ale, where it is planted, or Lo Mivla Veleika Ale, these two iterations haven't really been discussed, where it's not Mivla and it is planted. Itmar La Lehai Gisa, Itmar La. Lahai Gisa, Shuda Dadaini. We're not exactly sure how we would paskin. Rava would have to adjudicate based on his own judgment in those cases, but it's otherwise not crystal clear from the Gemara as to how we would adjudicate those two cases. Shuda Dadaini means that the, the Dain has to look and say, what was his intention? We need to make a tzushtel, a little bit of a guess, but an educated guess as to what was intended by the Mechira. We'll stop right here at the two dots. Emir Tashem will pick up tomorrow night at Amar Rabbah. Wishing you all a beautiful night.